The thumbnail of this video is 100% AI generated. This is me looking pretty suave at Paris Fashion Week. This is from another ramp walk from the same event. This is me in front of the Eiffel Tower, it's a selfie. This is me in front of a fighter jet. And this is me at a fancy dinner. And none of these images were actually shot. Every single one of them were AI generated. And in this video, I'm going to teach you exactly how to do this. How to train a model on your own face in order to generate your LinkedIn headshots, your Instagram profile pictures, etc, etc. But before we do that, hit the subscribe button. My name is Sridev and you're watching the AI Labs by 100x Engineers. In order to train a model to recognize your face, what you essentially need to do is to create something called as a LoRa. LoRa stands for Low Rank Adaptation. It's basically a very fancy way of saying something very simple. Picture this. You have an AI model that is really good at generating images for you, but it doesn't really recognize your face. So you add a data set of your face into this existing model, and now this model can finally recognize who you are. And the reason why LoRa's are a powerful method to do this is because you don't have to train the entire model from scratch again. You can just train this new data set that you're adding into the model. So it saves a lot of time, a lot of costs, and a lot of energy. It's like if I want a little more salt in my food, I'm not going to start the entire cooking process from scratch. I'm just going to take a salt shaker and add some salt to it. Not a very accurate analogy, but paints a decent picture. In order to train a LoRa, you need two things. You need the data set and you need the trainer. Let's start with the first one. A data set is basically a collection of pictures of yourself. So I have so many pictures of myself that I have just transferred from my phone. Now, ideally, all these pictures need to be in different lighting scenarios and different angles so that the model is able to identify your face from different angles and different lighting conditions as well. I have about 43 pictures, but honestly, about 20 to 25 pictures will do. All of these pictures were taken from my iPhone. Just make sure they are high resolution and high quality. So I have all my pictures in this folder called Boson, which is a nickname that I use. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to compress this into a zip folder. Now, once you're done with this, you're done with the first step. You have your data set ready. Now onto the second component of this workflow, the training model itself. In order to create a LoRa of your face, we are going to train it on a Flux dev model. Flux is an image diffusion model launched by this company called Black Forest Labs, and it is extremely good at getting realistic faces. It's very similar to your mid-journey, stable diffusion, etc, etc. And the best part, it's open source. I've put a link to the Flux Dev LoRa Trainer in the description, so you can just open and get started with that. Now, the Flux Dev LoRa Trainer is hosted on a website called Replicate. Replicate is a website where anyone can basically deploy their AI models for others to use. So if you don't have an account, just create an account. It's free to create an account, sign up, and you will see the screen that I'm seeing in front of me right now. All right, now just follow along carefully. I will first click the drop down menu on destination and click on create model. And I'll give my model a name. I want to call my model Boson. And I'll just make it private because I don't want anyone to use it. After I'm done with that, I will upload my input images. So I will click over here and I will upload the zip folder that I just created with my data set. Now that's done, what I'm going to do is I'm going to input a trigger word. Okay, explanation time. The trigger word is the particular word that you use in order to recall this data set you're training into the model. An example of that would be, let's say that the LoRa training is done. And the trigger word that I used is boson. Now every time I want to prompt something, let's say I want to prompt something like a photo of boson in a suit. Now every time I type boson into the prompt or the trigger word into the prompt, the model understands that it is supposed to recall this particular data set that I trained as a LoRa. So it is kind of like an identification marker where you're sort of calling back that data set and you're kind of telling the model that, hey, I want this particular data set, this particular LoRa that I had just trained onto this model. So if I basically took a bunch of images of my watch and created a data set out of it, and let's say my trigger word was iWatch, every single time I type iWatch, it basically recalls the training images and generates from that. After that, we go directly into steps. What I'm going to do over here is change the steps to 2000, which I feel is a pretty ideal spot in order to train these models. You don't need to change the learning rate. You don't need to change the LoRa rank. And now comes the final two fields you need to enter in order to start training. The HF repo ID and the HF token secret. HF stands for Hugging Face. Hugging Face is a website that is basically like the GitHub for AI. You get free models, you get free data sets, you get free workflows, it's a thriving community. So what you need to enter over here is your Hugging Face repo ID and your Hugging Face token. Here's how you do that. 
You first go to huggingface.co. If you don't have an account, create one. There are two steps you need to follow in Hugging Face. You look at the top right corner, you click on your profile and click on new model. All right, and just name your model. I'm going to name my model Boson and I'm gonna make this model private. And you should see something like this. Now I'll just go ahead and click the copy button over here. I'll go back to the training window and I will just paste my repo ID over here. Now to get the token or the secret, you click on the profile button at the top right corner, you click on settings and you go to access tokens. Now here you need to create a new token. You can name it whatever you like, I'll call it 100x new and granted permission to everything basically. And then you click on create token. Now this token is visible to you only once. So you need to copy it because after this you will never be able to see this token ever again. So if you did this step wrong, it's better to create a new token. So I'm going to copy this, I'm going to click on done and I will just paste the secret token over here. And that's about it. I just need to click on create training and it will actually start training my LoRa. Now, if this is the first time you're actually using Replicate, it is going to prompt you to add your billing details. Now, the cost to train your own LoRa or generate images on Replicate is very affordable. It costs three to four dollars in order to train your own LoRa and for every image you generate, it's just a couple of cents. So in Indian rupees, it's roughly 200 to 250 rupees in order to train your LoRa and it probably costs a rupee or two in order to generate an image. Quite cheap. Now once your model is training, you should start seeing something like this on the log. And this process will last for a while, about 15 to 30 minutes depending on the size of your dataset file. Now after the training is done, you should see a message that says training has been completed. All right, so we're done actually training a LoRa on your face. Now, how do you actually use this model? Well, I've actually posted another link in the description below the training link in order to actually use the model. This is what we typically call as inferencing. This is basically what you should see on the screen and I'll tell you how to set it up. Scroll all the way to the bottom and stop at the place where you see HF LoRa. And all you need to do over here is type your Hugging Face repo ID. So I'm gonna go back to Hugging Face, I'm gonna go to my profile and I'm gonna select the model. And now that my model has been trained, I should get all the model weights and the model files over here. So I can not only use this on Replicate, I can use this pretty much anywhere I want to. I can click on files and versions in order to see what are the files that has been trained. And usually, LoRa's come as safe tensor files. Now, you don't need to download this file. All you need to do is copy this link just like you did. Go to the inferencing model, paste it, and that's about it. You're done. Now let's prompt and check it out. A photo of Boson at Paris Fashion Week. And while this image is loading, you can do a bunch of other things on this model as well. You can change the aspect ratio. You can change the number of outputs. You can generate up to four outputs at the same time. And you can increase the strength of the prompt or increase the strength of the LoRa. But whatever default values are already there are pretty ideal for most use cases. So you would not need to really tweak them. All right, that's me looking like a fashionista at Paris Fashion Week. Pretty much looks exactly like me. Now let's try a LinkedIn headshot. A photo of Boson wearing a suit and a tie. And there we have it. I think I look pretty sharp in this picture. Let me know what you think in the comments. Now, generating LinkedIn headshots is one use case of this model, but it doesn't just end there. You can use it for your social media posts. You can generate marketing campaigns. One of the rather interesting things that I did was basically gather a bunch of Amul ads and train a LoRa on the Amul girl. And using this LoRa, I generated a bunch of images that were pretty similar to Amul campaigns. This was just basically done as an experiment. Now, one thing that I'd like to mention is that while training faces, you can train your own face, but before you are using it on someone else's face, please take their consent. If you do train an AI model on someone else without their consent, it can actually land you in serious trouble. So stay away from doing that and stay on the right side of morality and ethics. 
That being said, I just have one quick thing to add. We at 100X Engineers are doing a hackathon very soon in a few weeks. So if you are an AI engineer, if you are an AI builder, and if you would like to take part in this hackathon, we have put the registration link in the description as well. Go ahead and register. You can know more details about it in the links that I've given below. And I hope to see you in the hackathon. Until next time, don't forget to hit that subscribe button. I'll see you in the next one.